International show jumper Joan Stockdale. Thank you very much for inviting me over. No, thank you very much for coming. So we have. Um, I asked my Instagram followers some questions for you. So we're going to start off quite easy. So the first <laughs> one is, how old are you? Uh, I'm 19. And the next one is, what is your first? What was your first pony like? My first pony um, was a little 12-2 pony called Aww. Muffet, um, and she lived to about 40. Odd. She was absolutely oh, wow. ancient by the time um, she passed away. But yeah, she was a super little pony. Oh, and can you remember what your first competition was like? Um, I'm sure I can't remember the actual first competition. One of the ones that I can remember from when I was youngest was actually jumping, you know, the 30 centimetre cross poles at Hickstead. Oh wow! Uh, on a lead yeah. ring with my dad. Yeah. Oh, what is the best thing about your job? Best thing about my job. Um, Difficult one, really. I think I, I really enjoy the, just riding the horses and being around them and working on the yard at home. Um, but actually, the travelling and getting to see a lot of different places and new shows is uh, a really high point nice. as well. Nice. <laughs> so the next question is a little bit funny, but are you subscribed to the This Is Me YouTube channel? Yes, I am. Yeah, I am. <laughs> okay, I'm that's indeed. good. Um, I'm go. subscribed to your YouTube channel as well, Team Stockdale. So I'll leave a link in the description below to that. And um, the next one is, are there any other sports that you enjoy? Um, yeah, so I actually play a little cricket as well. Um, I really enjoy my cricket. I was half uh, thinking about making a career out of that. Um, I was involved in North Hans and things, but um, yeah, I've decided to go down the horses route and uh, really enjoying it so far. What are some of your highlights of the year so far? Highlights of the year? Um, well, I got to go to the Young Rider European Championships. Um, I took my horse, Don Diego, there. Uh, he jumped really, really well. He actually he went phenomenal there, so that was probably a highlight for me. And what are your plans for the rest of the year? Plans for the rest of the year? Um, I've got a good couple of international shows planned, a few three stars um, over in France and Belgium. So, yeah, I'm going to take um, my top team out there and hopefully get on OK. Cool. And um, the last sort of questions are all about your horses, so should we go meet them? Yeah, sounds good. Right, so here we've got Frankie, um, his show name was Calico Bay, he was the horse that my dad won the King George V Gold Cup on. Um, he's now 18 years old, so he's semi-retired, he still gets ridden most days, um, but he goes to the odd show now and then, he just sort of gets an easy life, goes in the field when he wants to. Um, but as you can see, he's a bit of a grumpy old man, <laughs> he likes his own space. Okay, moving on, um, so here we've got Romeo. This is um, my little grey stallion, uh, Gunner the second in his show name. He was the horse that I jumped at Horse of the Year Show Grand Prix, he jumped clear there. Um, he's only 15 too, so you can see he's a bit of a, bit of a smaller horse compared Aww. to what he's jumping, but um, yeah, he's a lovely horse. He's the one I've had the longest out of the lot here. So in here, this is the seven-year-old, uh, Union Jack is his show name, otherwise known as Jack. Uh, he's a lovely stallion actually, he's just starting to grow Hello. a bit and you know, <laughs> get a bit chunky. You can see he's got a big neck on him. Um, actually, yeah, it would be a nice one for the future, I think. Um, here, so we've got a couple of younger ones. This is a five-year-old James, he's called. Um, just going out to a few shows now, just sort of getting up, up and running. Um, yeah, really nice horse, really careful one, he's, he's pretty cute. <laughs> <laughs> Here we've got Cash, this is Casherelle, she's a really special one. You'll see it, she's a really, really lovely mare. Um, I think for the future, she's only eight at the minute, um, but in the future she's going to be a, a proper Grand Prix horse, um, so she's really one to keep an eye on. She'll start stepping up and doing a few two-star shows, two-star Grand Prix now for the back end of this year and then go again next year for some big classes. So this is Angel, ignore the name. Uh, she's <laughs> another five-year-old. We bought her at the same time as James in an auction. Um, really, really nice mare. Uh, I think in the future she'll be a really nice one. She feels proper when you jump her now. She's just five years old. Um, so another one to look out for. <laughs> okay, Joe, let's have a look around your lorry. Yep, after you. Thank you. Ooh. So talk to me a little bit more about the lorry. 
So we've had this lorry for two years now. Um, Snoke Supreme, really, really good truck. It's actually, we had it fully custom made because we didn't want a living too big. Um, so you actually see, this is with it fully popped out as well. Um, when it's popped in, it is then half the size of this in the living. Um, but we need to get all the space in for the horse yes. in the back. So we can take eight horses in it. Um, and that's with really quite big partitions as well as all, you know, trunks and all of our kit and tack and things as well. So what's the biggest journey you've ever done in it? So actually just after I got my HGV license, we did a three day trip to Spain. Oh wow. Um, so we were doing a pre, like almost a pre-season tour out there um, where we did five weeks in Spain. So yeah, it was a, it was a long three day yes, journey. Yes, I can imagine. Yeah. It felt a lot shorter going there than it did coming, coming back. back. The, long, the way back tires. was, yeah, a really hard work, I have to say. So what's the sort of routine with the horses on a long journey like that? So the way we do it is we obviously will often leave early in the morning so there's no traffic. That means we can get there a little bit quicker. Yeah. The horses don't have to be on the lorry for so long. Um, they'll have a hay net on um, during as well, just so they've got something to eat and things. And then what we'll do is after we've driven a certain stint, me and Charlotte, um, we'll stop, they'll have a bit of water and they can have breakfast or lunch then. Um, and we just try and make breaks. So we, don't, we can't actually get them off the lorry, yeah. uh, obviously in the service station, just in case. Yeah. Um, but we work it, so we have stopovers. So on that long journey, we stop three times. So they have like a good nine to 12 hour, you know, rest in between the journey, if you will. Um, just so they can have a bit of a chill out nice. rather than sitting <laughs> on the lorry. Yeah. yeah. And in the back here, it's full. It's got fans all the way, uh, windows on both sides. So, you know, if it is hot, they don't get Yeah, it's the looked off is so well. <laughs> yeah, we try and keep them comfy yeah. anyway. So I've just sort of started driving our three and a half tonner. What's it like to drive this beast? <laughs> so yeah, it's actually not as bad as you think. Once you gauge how sort of wide and long it is, um, it's really not too bad to, to drive. And actually with this, it's fully automatic. So you don't need to worry about the gears. Um, it's basically got cameras all around it and it's got, it's got all these fancy things. It's got a screen so you can watch the horses um, as well as, you know, sat nav in there. Also, it'll tell you if you're drifting out of a lane or not, so it stops you from falling asleep. Um, yeah, it's a pretty fancy lorry, I have to say. Um, so uh, to drive, once you're on the motorway, these French motorways and it's clear roads, it's really easy. It's quite nice, quite nice to drive, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we're just heading down now to Bottom Yard. Uh, here we've got the feed room, the wash room and the tack room, and then a few horses down the bottom as well. So this is the feed room. Um, all of our horses on Spiller's horse feed and uh, horse fur supplements as well. It's nice and tidy in here. <laughs> yeah, we try and keep it tidy. Generally, we try and keep the yard. My dad was a bit OCD and I'm a bit the same. Um, so everywhere has to be swept within an inch of its life and you know, kept as tidy and as neat as possible. So in here, we've got the wash bays. Um, so every horse comes in here every day. So they get washed off after they've um, been ridden. So whether that's just a hot cloth or a full bath, if they're going to a show, say. Um, so yeah, I've got a full solarium in here. So in the winter, this is definitely the place to be because yes, it's can lovely and warm nice in here. Warm, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I say, they all come in here, get washed off and just check. There's no scratches, bumps, cuts or anything like that and they get all sorted. Nice. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at the room that everyone's excited to see, the tack room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Pretty nice. <laughs> Your tack room is so tidy, does it usually look like this? Yeah, I have to say actually, um, we try to pride ourselves on keeping things nice and tidy and clean and where it should be, so yeah, I have, it is actually usually like this, I haven't just made it clean for you today. So in this tack room there is a lot of history, tell me a bit more about it. Yeah, no there's loads, so all the plaques you can see around the walls, um, they're basically results and in, uh, international shows that um, that our yard's been to, my dad's been to. Um, so yeah, some pretty special ones up there. Uh, you'd have to say that the most special would be the Beijing Olympic plaque just there on the door. Um, so yeah, I know there's some serious history and there's a lot of uh, long way for me to go, I think, by the looks of it. <laughs> so this looks a little bit familiar because I was at Hickstead last week and you were as well. Yep. So talk to me a little bit about this bank. So we're currently stood on our version of the Hickstead bank. It's a little bit smaller and a little, not quite as steep. Um, but yeah, everyone knows that Hickstead is an event unlike any other, so yes. <laughs> we need these sort of things. We have a lot of people come here and train around the Hickstead, you know, these features so the horse can get used to them. Um, and yeah, get a bit more prepared for somewhere like Hickstead. Okay, so this looks a bit familiar. Is this the Devil's Dyke? This is the Devil's Dyke. Um, this is an exact replica, uh, inch for inch, a replica of the Devil's Dyke at Hickstead. Um, I think it's probably one of the most difficult jumps to jump during the Hickstead Derby. Yes. So, <laughs> We got this built so that we could then practice and train and, you know, 
give the horses a bit of a chance to get used to it before we go there. So Joe's not actually here and he says that everywhere's really tidy so we're going to have a little muck heap inspection and see how tidy it really is. Oh wow. I think this is the tidiest muck heap I've seen in my life. It's like a perfect cuboid. However, I think I'd have to give it a nine and a half out of ten just because there are a few shavings on the floor. But apart from that, it's pretty spot on. <laughs> Brill, thank you. Okay, so I'm currently on Frankie or Calico Bay and he has actually won the King George V Cup so it's pretty cool to be riding such an epic horse. So he's actually retired now so we're just going to go for a little hack which should be really nice. And um, he's a bit bigger than Casper, he's a 16.3 but he actually feels pretty good. Like I thought he was going to feel absolutely massive but he's a pretty good size so <laughs> thanks for letting me go on a hack mate. So here we have Frankie, and then over here we have another Frankie, but it's an Elliot of London version. Right, so what does it feel like to ride a King George V Gold Cup winner? Oh, it's just absolutely incredible that you never really get an opportunity like this, so I'm very excited for our hack now. <laughs> yeah, he's a nice one to take. Though. Yes. <laughs> Uh, what we do up here is we basically use this a lot for strength and conditioning and a bit of fitness work for the horses. Um, it's really good because it's so steep down there. We'll trot, you know, trot and canter on each rein three or four times. Yep. Um, bit of fitness, it's really good for uh, obviously cardiovascular and also builds a lot of muscle up here in the back end, which is where they get all their power from, from the jump. Yep. Um, so yeah, we actually, when the weather's good, obviously, uh, we come <laughs> out here a lot and use this when we can. Um, it is, yeah, like I say, really beneficial for them. Obviously we're here, you're riding Frankie, I'm on yep. cash. Um, it's quite a nice combo. Frankie obviously being a winner of the King George V Gold Cup in the past. Yes. Um, <laughs> who knows, maybe cash can live up to that name and get a few tips and uh, maybe take that win one day as well. so much for inviting me over I've had such a great time also thanks for letting me ride Frankie as well no problem at on all. our little hack so we're actually going to be holding a giveaway over on my Instagram page so that's going to be for a Beware Numner a Team Stockdale one so all the information will be over on my Instagram um, I'll also leave Joe's YouTube and Instagram links in the description below go and subscribe to him as well if you're new or have not done so already please subscribe to my channel as well thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you all next time bye